Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, Christina and I are excited and maybe a little anxious uh, to present to you, uh, or just not, not present, have a conversation. We'll give you some information about um, this project and then uh, uh, we'll answer some questions if there are any at the end. Um, I had been a part of a presentation or a panel um, at the first homecoming where we discussed this exact project. And back then it was still on paper, it hadn't been realized yet, and, and now it is. And we're actually coming to you live from within it. So um, Christine, I don't know. I'll, uh, Christine is my partner in, in this project. Um, Christine, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit more. Absolutely, I'm Christine Golden. I'm the director of the Jasper Du Bois County Library. I've worked at the library system for oh, just about 21 years now. I've um, been the director for the past seven years. I'm very excited when Kyle brought this idea together to talk of be able to get together and you know share our story on this and what what all it took to make this project happen. Um, so I'm I'm thrilled to be here today and ready to talk about all the things we've got going on in Jasper. Thanks, Rashina. I should have mentioned my name is Kyle Rupert. Um, as uh, Steph mentioned earlier, I'm the executive director of Jasper Community Arts, uh, the arts department for the city of Jasper. Um, and uh, I'll give you a little history about um, Jasper Community Arts. Uh, we were established uh, by city ordinance in 1975. Um, we are a two-time Governor's Art Award winner uh, back in 1987 and in 2007. Um, Jasper, we just eclipsed that 16,000 mark with our population, so we can no longer say a town of a little more than 15,000. Now we can use 16,000. So um, a lot going on here for a community of our size. Um, our department's primary focuses uh, are live performances, exhibitions, education, and outreach, both into our school system and various other community organizations. Alrighty. Well, let me talk a little bit about the library. Uh, we are a four branch system serving our population here in Dubois County, throughout much of Dubois County. Our population that we serve is about 32,000 total. Um, we're kind of a unique system that we also have a, we are a contractual library system. Um, so we have four branches total in this, in this system. And, but, but for the purposes of this project, Jasper is its own separate funding um, entity, um, also its own se separate government entity. So we have a our own tax base and um, re receive our funding separately from any other organizations. Uh, we're fortunate to have you know, truly wonderful facilities. We have two, two branches that were built at the beginning of 2010, 2011. Um, and in a bit, we're gonna talk about the quest to bring a new main branch to Jasper. Um, and you know, like any library, I think you know Kyle mentioned uh, one of our biggest things that we wanna do is provide quality. We wanna provide quality material, resources. Um, you know, programming, that, that's really always been our main focuses. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me is making sure that, the pro, that a library is always seen as a safe space. It's a place, a gathering place for all. And you, while you're also busy, never forgetting your main focus of always having material available. Uh, we have a circulation here that we tend to check out, you know, upwards of 250,000 items per year. And then we also have a, as well um, a plethora of uh, items available through online resources that have been wonderful for us to have during the, you know, of course, during the pandemic. Um, that's a little bit about the library. All right. All right. I think Kylan and we and I were talking about this. We decided, how do you start this? Well, let's start at the end and work our way back and then go back towards the end again. Um, what you're seeing here is a floor plan of the finished 10 Clark Cultural Center. Uh, you'll see on the map that we have a library, an atrium, and an art center. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the building and specifically about the library and then turn it over to Kyle for more information about the arts. Um, this facility, like I said, finished in the beginning of 2021, has just over 63,000 square feet um, cultural, of cultural enrichment in the heart of downtown Jasper. Um, the Jasper Public Library when we really started moving forward looking at what we were going to do next, we wanted to be able to pro provide study rooms, meeting rooms. Um, we've added a maker space and specific areas really designated for children and teenagers to be in the building. I said about space, I can't say that enough. And basically, I mean, also how wonderful this has been to have this extra space since uh, with the pandemic. Um, you know, we were really busting at the seams at our old location. Um, library started back in 
in the previous facility, it was built in 1952, we were packed to the brim. We didn't have in room. It was very much a transactional facility where you came in, you got what you wanted, and then you left. Um, as you walk into this new facility, that is completely not the point anymore. Um, now we want to get people in here, um, hang out, and really get to see what 21st century facilities, and I'm, I'm not just talking about the library here, but services in general can be, and what kind of amenities people should expect. Um, one of our focuses was really trying to get into the heart of downtown. With that comes a lot of extra hurdles to get over. Um, I think we found some really new, unique ways to do it, and but to still be able to provide a space where you're able to have, I mean, here at the library, even though, or the cultural center, even though we're right downtown, we still have over 200 parking spaces here available for us. Um, so we're, we're just thrilled to be able to be here. And I'm going to turn this over to Kyle and let him talk a little bit more about what's happening on the art side. Yeah, so the arts department of Jasper Community Arts for 45 years, uh, we had presented um, up to 16 live performances, mostly at the Jasper Arts Center. Um, we had presented uh, gallery exhibitions um, first in our dance studio slash community room and then up in the lobby whenever that was added on in the early to mid 80s. And then uh, we were doing a couple of workshops a year and then that exploded to 40 workshops a year, 60 workshops a year till a whole bunch more than that now. I couldn't even tell you the number off the top of my head because um, we've even grown from then. And those workshops primarily once they moved out of the community room, they moved into a space beneath the city swimming pool um, that had served a number of uses over the years. Um, but we had converted that area as creative individuals are want to do into an artistic space. And so we had done a number of seasonal workshops in that facility, but just like the library, it really wasn't fit for those activities. So we were cramped. It, it, we were limited on, on what we could offer, what we could provide. So right around the same time, the library had ramped up their search um, for additional space or new space. We were looking for new space as well. Oops, too far, there we go. Um, so what, what we did was we had drawn up plans early on um, in 2008, round about there, 2006, and the recession hit and all that got put by the wayside. Um, so what that had included ended up getting incorporated into this facility, uh, which was downtown, which was a much better location. Um, we've got three galleries instead of the one gallery space. We've got workshop rooms that are purpose built for uh, drawing and painting. We have a clay studio. We've got flexible spaces for crafts or other activities. We've got private studios. We have a black box theater. Um, all of these things that our community needed, our community had asked for. Um, we just hadn't been able to provide uh, until now. And so we're, we couldn't be more excited to partner with the library to bring those, um, those items to life, uh, those spaces to life. And now we're able to offer the type of programming um, that we couldn't before and bring those into our community of 16,000 people. Um, one of the comments we've heard so often um, is people can't believe they seen, they're seeing this in Jasper. And we'll touch more on that later um, when we get to the impact. But um, we needed that space. But the nice thing about that space, or about this space, I should say, is that we have room to grow. Um, we didn't come into this space, fill it up to the brim, and now left shaking our heads, what do we do now? Now we don't have enough space to continue to grow. So we've got plenty of space to, to add on within the facility, both in terms of programming, both, both in terms of aesthetics. We've got tons of wall space, um, plans for murals and other art projects to go up. Um, programming has been enhanced. Uh, we're offering daily workshops now, which we weren't offering before. That's been a transition for us. Um, so we're just extremely excited about the opportunities that this will present, not only for us, but a space for the community to have as well. Um, but it, you know, this project started um, well before the arts got involved. I get asked often, you know, well, when did this start again? How long ago did this start taking place? And that's always a tricky question to answer because it really depends on, on who you ask. If you ask the arts around about 2013, 2014, but if you ask the library, they've been clamoring for a space for a lot longer. And I'll let Christine kind of touch base on that a little bit. All right, here's the slide. Here's is how it starts. 
So we talked about that, um, the idea that when did it start for us? Uh, the library um, kind of had pretty much a tumultuous past. Uh, we've come, to, we've overcome a lot to be where we are today. This is a project that has been obviously in the works for quite some time for us. As you can see, we went to a referendum, um, asked the taxpayers for approval to build a new library on a separate location on just on the other side of the river. Uh, back in 2011, this was after probably another seven, eight years of finding a site, looking what was next. But we moved forward. Um, there was a lot of contention on this. Um, you know, I like to say a lot, you would never think the public library would be the lead in the news. Um, you go back to probably any time between, I would say, you know, 2008, 2016, we were probably your number one news story in the local paper. Um, so it was a it was a tough time. Uh, split board when it came down to deciding this, a very split community, um, and overwhelmingly the new library was turned down. Uh, Seventy three percent voted no. So then it was time to think what happens next. So kind of put a pause on everything for a couple of years, looked at doing some renovations, interior renovations, just to get us by until we could do something new. And then honestly, about the end of two, beginning of two thousand fourteen, it was time for the library to really start looking at okay. We took our pause. We need to really focus because I don't think there was an ever a disagreement that we needed more space. We needed a new facility. It was really just what that space was going to be. So we moved forward, um, started our own building committee and started looking at different sites and how this worked together. Um, and we're going to talk about this on the timeline. I'm leading us right into that. Um, just a second. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things that was really difficult. And we tried to figure out what was next. And kind of just, I don't know, Kyle, what would be the best way to say it? I don't know by happenstance or what the best way to say it would be um, as we move forward to the next slide. I think we could talk about really how this timeline came together, really kind of starting with that riverfront plan. If you want to share about that, Kyle. Yeah, so the, the area where this building sits now um, had been occupied by old factory buildings that really hadn't been used for many, many, many years, um, going on decades. And there really hadn't been a lot of movement in terms of investment in those areas. And the mayor at the time, uh, Mayor Seitz, um, he used to, he had started using a, a phrase: um, "You're either investing in your growth or you're managing your decline." Um, and so, around December of 2013, the city of Jasper re released the downtown riverfront uh, and master plan. Uh, and part of that plan encompassed um, doing a lot of work around the courthouse square, but really identifying those vacant buildings along the river and investing in those spaces. Um, and so it, again, it just so happened that around that time, the arts department, Jasper Community Arts, we were working on our next strategic plan. And one of the things that we identified was the, the Jasper Arts Center is a 10 minute drive. It's a 10 minute drive to anywhere in Jasper. It's not that far. But up here, we might as well have been in another state for some people. Um, and so we really wanted to buy into this plan that the city was, was putting together and, and provide more artistic opportunities downtown in Jasper and, and be closer to the community, and be that hub that we saw ourselves as being. And so we started looking at facilities downtown. We, there was talk about um, there's a, an old movie theater downtown that's been renovated uh, since these conversations took place called the Astro Theater. We were in talks about maybe that's a space for us that we could utilize. And we do in part today. But then um, the conversation started bubbling up with the library. Libraries look, looking at spaces. Hey, they identified this factory space that just so happens to fall within this downtown riverfront master plan. Uh, and our boards met to walk through what was then called the Hoosier Desk Building uh, for the first time in December 2014, we walked through the space. The space was more than 60,000 square feet, far too big for any one entity um, like Jasper Community Arts or Jasper Public Library to take on by themselves. But that really got the conversation started about, hey, this might be something that, that we could do together. Um, combine our efforts, you know, library, Christine talked about the library struggles uh, and getting a uh, referendum passed in the past. We've talked about our struggles about getting enough of the community um, to support any expansion of the arts at that, you know, in, in past efforts. Um, and so we started communicating and working together and a lot of meetings occurred. Um, fast forward to, uh, we, 
were able to bring in some outside help. Um, uh, at the time, I believe they were called City Visions or City Properties Group, um, and, and they helped us identify some ways we might be able to pay for a project like this um, uh, without entirely going through the taxpayers um, locally. And so one of the ways that were identified were some dyno tax credits from the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. We had these industrial sites. They were looking to invest in those sites in order to reinvigorate them. Um, and so long story short, we put together an application uh, detailing the project. We submitted it. We were fortunate enough to be awarded um, $3.4 million in tax credits um, toward the project. Um, and so having that in hand, having um, you know, a visual representation in hand of what the project would look like, library take it to a referendum, library and arts working together. Everybody's unified at this point uh, to really promote this. Um, we'll, get, we'll get into some of the details here in a second. Um, November 2016, the library referendum passes. A month later, the property um, is acquired um, so we can get started. Um, and all this time, we've been fundraising um, we've been we've been having public meetings. Um, we've been having um, conversations individually with with stakeholders or those who hold sway within the community as far as public opinion. So um, a lot of effort behind the scenes to try to get that referendum passed. A lot of conversations back and forth between the library board and city council as far as who is going to move first as far as bonding goes. Um, referendum passes that opened up so many more. Uh, lanes for which we could travel through. Um, so yeah, we raised a bunch of money. Christina, if you want to touch on how we got to where we are now. Absolutely, Kyle. Um, so yeah, we continued to raise the money and then it was time to realize, okay, we've done this. We've acquired the property. Now we've got to take this big building that was here down this factory. Like Kyle said, it was probably about a hundred thousand square foot factory. So we went through the process, identified um, areas that perhaps we were able to preserve. Um, didn't get to save a lot of the building, but we, I, as you walk through here, I think you'll see some, you know, some really nice tributes to the old facility that was here. And um, that took, you know, it took a good five, six months to get the building down. And then we really started to have to look at finalizing our con you know our construction plans um got that ready went to went to that's probably the nervous i've ever been uh, i mean we ever had to open those bids for construction because we'd done so much work to get ready for this and then it was time to really find out who we were going to work um work with on this project and i can't say enough we were so fortunate to get to work with a local contractor here who as there as you can look out this window i'm looking out right now and see their offices um and I think that played a big part into it, you know, for us with this project is they put a lot of heart and soul into it as well, um, and making sure this was done right. But of course, like everything, um, I think this is probably one of those projects that um, we could probably be pretty great hurdle um, hurdlers at this point because this is what we've done. We've jumped over hurdles, so we're ready to go with construction. And it's spring, and guess what? It's pouring down rain all the time, and it's really hard to do earthwork when that's happening. So. Felt like for several months, we were just kind of stuck in the mud, literally and figuratively. Um, but, you know, then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but sometime there in the spring, you know, late spring, early fall, even into of 2019, you just really, every time you went by the building, it just was, it was picking up speed and you were starting to really get a sense of what was going to be happening here. And then it just honestly became time to start, let's looking at what it's gonna be like to get to work here. And in December, I don't know how many times we probably bothered Matt, the general contractor on, hey, when can we move in? When are we getting to move in? And he'd be like, soon, soon, soon. Um, and then he gave us the opportunity and said, okay, we're ready. And um, got, got on the mission to move here. Um, anybody, I know we've got a lot of public library people here that that is not a small undertaking by any means to move a um, building, move all the content. So that was quite the, undertaking as well, but um, as we move forward, we got to January, we got everything in, and then, you know, we were about ready to go. Um, I think our next slide, though, is going to show maybe a little bit about what the next hurdle we had to deal with, um, a little bit with, we got, we got to this point, but I think we even have just a few more details about what it took, because we were government entities on how to make this happen. Yeah, so this time, it just goes to show, um, you know, seven years. The construction part was uh, less than two, 
um, but it was really seven years from when our boards met to get to this point to be completed. Uh, and so it, it's been a long endeavor. Um, uh, you could almost be vested as a public employee in the time that it took to do this. Um, so uh, it took a lot, a lot of hours, a lot of meetings, um, but we're so excited that the space is now open and available to the community and has been now for 10 months. Um, and some, it feels like so much longer, but yeah, it's just been the 10 months. So how did we do it? Um, we talked about what we did. We talked about how long it took to do it. How did we do it? Um, pictured here, you'll see the top picture is a photo of uh, Mayor Seitz uh, and Jim and Pat Tin, who the building gets its name from, the Tin Clark Cultural Center. Um, and that is um, Demo Day. So the first uh, swing of the uh, excavators, if you will, into the property that was standing here before. And then the photo below um, is the celebration of the night the referendum passed. And you can see how excited everybody was um, that night. Uh, Christine is on the left side of the image. Uh, I'm sure she's thrilled that I pointed that out. Um, but this was uh, me. I'm just going to share this now. This was me. I'd been in the paper not long before with my mouth wide open. And I remember being, they're going to take pictures, cover your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, how, how did we do it? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about the funding. Um, this ended up being about a, I mean, when you get done with it, it was almost a $20 million project in reality. Um, that did not call, come from taxpayers, though. We want to make sure that, you know, that's one of probably my proudest moments on this, um, that we were, I think we made sure to make Jasper proud in the building that we we're able to present and open every single day, but we did it in a way to really limit that need for taxpayer um, assistance. Uh, biggest thing in Jasper Lead, you see here, this was our community campaign um, led by Jim and Pat Tin to be able to get get the funds raised. Uh, we were able to raise over $4.8 million. That came from a total of 268 donors. And out of those donations, $1,000 or more came from 24 different companies and 75 individuals, community organizations, and foundations. And I, I walk by our donor wall every day and I see it and it really makes me think this was another thing that so many of these people invested in and pledged money before we even passed the referendum. They committed to this project because they were our true believers in what we were going to be able to do. And every single moment like that really made a difference when it came to getting that support we needed to get the referendum passed, to get the councils on board with pro providing funding. And then um, also, as Kyle said, we were able to get the $3.4 million in dino tax credits, which we learned a lot about that process. And how that all worked and what a benefit some of those programs are that are out there that are available to really revitalize areas. And then the library was able to bond $6.5 million and the city bonded $6 million. So out of that 19.8 total million dollars spent um, spent on the project, we we asked the taxpayers for $12.5 million. So again, you know, just a, a number I'm super proud to be able to say that we were able to have almost $7 million come from other outside sources. But that wasn't it, was it, Kyle? Yeah, we, we, also, we other had stuff going on, didn't we? Yeah, well, I think that uh, another key thing is, is that nearly all the funds um, necessary, uh, we had a budget that we had to stick to, and we knew we had a budget because we knew how much money we had raised. Um, so that's what Christine mentioned, kind of the nail biter at the bid opening. Uh, we weren't sure at that point, you know, if these were going to come in far above what we had budgeted, uh, we didn't know exactly yet what we were going to do at that point. Um, but uh, fortunately, they, we had several that came in under um, what we had budgeted. And I think that having all those funds up front um, really helped us continue with the project um, throughout the construction phase. Um, one of the things we, we did early on, um, both with consultation of city council and, and library council, uh, we formed uh, an LLC, um, which allowed for both of our boards uh, and staff to focus on operations while the project moved forward. That was one of the key things that allowed us to do because um, we were still, library was still offering services. Again, seven years of time um, working on this. Um, so services and time. Now the LLC wasn't in existence for that entire period, but we never stopped offering exhibits or live shows 
or uh, the library's um, services and offerings or, or its circulation um, didn't stop being available to the public. So we still had our day jobs, if you will, um, to continue managing both of these organizations um, while working on this project, which, which could have been its own job, um, honestly, on its own. So having that LLC, um, the, those folks that were a part of that board to be able to focus on that part of the project. Now we still reported back to our boards and still got their input and let them know what was going on um, and passed along any concerns or suggestions or comments they had, um, but it really allowed them to focus on the actual operations of the arts department or of the, the library. Um, it also allowed us to streamline the payment process. Um, things can get odd enough times when you're dealing with government agencies or entities and trying to pay bills. Um, if we threw a second one into the mix and then who's paying what and how and how much. And um, so really having that LLC be that one entity allowed us to uh, streamline that process and make the payment uh, to the vendors, to the contractors, um, a lot simpler and a lot less of a headache. Uh, and then it also allowed us to bring in additional perspectives. Our board was all brought in for JCA. The library's board was bought in. We could have gone through this whole thing with rose colored glasses, but we didn't. And we brought in people who were uh, uh, experts in other areas um, who were not against the project, were for the project, but they weren't as close to it. So they could help us you know, point out some things maybe along the way that maybe we missed. Uh, so that was really helpful. Um, together, arts in the, in the library, uh, you know, we campaigned for community support. Of course, the referendum was a huge part. If the referendum didn't pass, it's likely the project wouldn't have been able to go forward. Um, and so it really took everybody on the library board, everybody on the library staff, and the same on, with Jasper Community Arts um, to promote the project. Um, and in order to do that, we had several, several public meetings. Um, we gave presentations similar to this one um, that were more conceptual in nature that talked about the needs of the library, the needs of the arts uh, in our community, what feedback we had gotten already that led us to that point. And as any, you know, community like ours that's focused on how we're spending dollars, um, how we were going to pay for it and what they were going to get for that investment. And so having the use of visual aids uh, was extremely helpful. We had renderings that we were able to get drawn up early enough in the process. We could show people who maybe weren't creatively minded or who weren't able to see our vision. Um, we could show them. It's easy. Here it is right in front of you. This is what it's going to look like give or take, anybody who's watched a home improvement show, you know, they always show you a rendering and then at the end it's close. It's not quite exactly how they rendered it, but this is what it's gonna look like. This is what you're gonna get. Um, and so I, I think more than anything, as far as the community engagement, that was such a huge component. Um, the other thing we did too, cause you talk about, you know, the library taking you know, bonding part of it. Um, we showed uh, uh, with the refer well, the referendum to help pay for that, the library put up a website. You could put in your information; it'll tell you how much it was. So we could then tell people who would say it's going to go up this much or this much. But like it's going to be a diet coke a month. It, it really helped us have those conversations with folks, um, and, and I think that's what helped get it from that seventy thirty no to a sixty forty yes. Um, I think and so. Kyle, yeah. um, that's the biggest thing I would say with anybody, you know, and we've had people come now. That's a big part of this presentation, why we're happy to do these things. We've had people come from other communities already and come and visit the site and talk to us about this. And, you know, I think the always the big takeaway is how'd you do it? What's the biggest thing? I think number one thing is always communication, either communication between our organizations with the public, letting them know, you know, we're not looking to hide stuff here. This is our plan. This is what we want to do. We want the feedback of the community because at the end of the day, this project is for them. Um, you know, and that's that's the biggest point. Yes, it's absolutely, um, it's always more difficult, I think, in the beginning to go into something in an unknown world together. But at the end of the day, it's become, you know, one of the most rewarding things I've ever been involved with. And the new, as, as Kyle talked about, the new allies that, you know, you've made, the people that are gonna go to bat for you now that you would have never anticipated being there for you probably 10 years ago. 
that are now some of your biggest supporters. So I think that's probably the thing I would take away from this more than anything is just always having those lines of communication open and sharing what's happening. Absolutely. And I think like, I think before this project, um, Christine, how often did you and I really converse? Uh -huh. I don't really? know. Yeah. yeah. So this project, it didn't just bring together JPL and JCA, it brought together people. And I think what Christine's touching on too is people are the most important part. Um, and, and the more people you can, you can bring in and help um, understand what your vision is um, and then help share that and promote that and answer those questions. Cause there's so, so many, we still get questions today about things that we never certainly talked about. We're never in any presentations, but somehow they're out there. Um, and, and the more people that you can get up to speed and get behind a project, um, the more helpful it'll be in those conversations and getting that community support, getting that referendum passed, getting your the city council to approve bonding for the city's portion of the project. Um, so many hurdles throughout the whole project that without people buying in, it, it would have just fallen apart. Um, and so that's how we did it. We got, we got people on board. We got a visual representation of the vision uh, that, so we could show people who maybe couldn't see it themselves. Um, we uh, were able to turn that vision into raising money from a number of different sources, both from a few dollars to, like Christine said, more than a thousand, ten thousand. I think there were some that were maybe over a hundred thousand. Um, so all all manner of donations that we that we accepted, um, and then utilizing the resources made available by the state um, uh, and identifying those properties when nobody was willing to invest or hadn't been willing to invest saying, you know what, we'll do that. We'll invest in that. We believe in, in our community and we believe in that area and, and that's what we're gonna do. Um, so that's how we did it. That's a very simplified version of how we did it. Um, there were many, many more lawyers involved at different times of the process, many, many more meetings. Um, Christine and I for a while were meeting probably once a week, if not more, phone calls every day. Um, but that's a very simplified version of, of how we did it. And we can talk about um, specific aspects of that if anybody has questions uh, about that. Um, we've worn many hats throughout this. We've learned so many things. My LinkedIn profile should be a lot longer than probably what it is now. Um, but then uh, we can talk about, you know, how it's going. Um, and, uh, you know, the impact of that COVID had on the project. Obviously, um, we started building um, right before, about six months or so before the pandemic hit us. And then all the way through, right, Christine? Yeah, um, you know, anytime you think what could possibly happen next on this project, what's going to be the next one, and then boom, we get hit with a global pandemic. Um, fortunately, again, though, that's where you really pay tribute to the people that were invested in the project. Um, there were plenty of opportunities where our contractors and subcontractors could have walked out and said, this isn't what we want to do right now. But they were prepared. They had always had their materials on order. Sure, there were delays. There's always delays. Um, with anything, but I think they were able to minimize the effects of COVID um, when it came to that, when it came to the building process and um, able to, you know, keep going in a safe manner because that was important to us too, keep them safe. Um, it puts you in a really awkward position. You want your building done, but not at the cost of, you know, people's safety. So that was number one for us, even when it came time to moving in. I think, Kyle, how many times did I share this, that, you know, we had these big dreams of we were going to have the whole community come and help us move. You know, we were going to do this. And then it came time to move. And it was like, well, no, we don't really want anybody even hardly outside of our staffs to be there. Because again, it was that scare of, um, you know, just really what's going to happen. So there were even delays when it came to that. So we just kept moving forward and got in. But this is the part I'm most excited to talk about, Kyle. How's it going now, right? What's happening in the nine and a plus months we've been here? Right. So, uh, you know, we knew we knew the project would be transformative. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have pushed so hard to make it happen. Um, but I at least from my perspective, I think it exceeded even my wildest expectations. Um, since this facility opened uh, for the arts, it was January 19th um, to public traffic coming in um, visits to exhibits. Uh, are up nearly 450% since 2000 and oh, over 2019. I don't include 2020's numbers because we were shut down for uh, a lengthy period of time during that. 
Um, we've had more visits to an exhibit in 2021 so far than we've had or than we had had from 2012 to 2019 combined. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people, when I share that say, well, location, well, yeah, of course, that was a whole big reason why we wanted to move that component down to this area downtown. Um, so I think we're, we're closing in on, or we just passed 13,000 visits, um, through the month of September and the first part of October. Um, but I also think that, yeah, it, we've had so many people come in who've never come in before. Sure, yeah, the building is new, it's, it's attractive. Um, they wanna come in and check out what all the hubbub is. And then they discover that there's this exhibit here uh, or three exhibits. And that's our next opportunity is, okay, now we've got them here. Now they've seen what's available. How do we keep them coming back? And so that's the next part of our journey is continuing that momentum. Um, artwork sales. Uh, we do sell artwork out of our galleries. Those are that revenue is up 67 percent from 2019. Um, businesses have taken notice of our organization of what we do here at Jasper Community Arts. Our corporate sponsorship, if I talk about the number of sponsors, is up 71 percent. If I talk about sponsorship revenue, is up 130 um, percent. And then uh, you know usage out of all of our arts facilities um, is up 22 percent from 2019. These are all from 2019. Uh, we just try not to think about what 2020 was like. Um, and then rental, we have more rental spaces available now. So that revenue, of course, is, is up from what it was before. So the engagement factor has just gone through the roof. And I think that we are on a trajectory where that's just going to continue to increase. And it's so important to show then those that invested, uh, whether it was financially or with their time, um, or that put their faith in myself and in Christine to show like, this is what you're going to get. You, you invest in the arts. Uh, this is how your community is going to respond. Uh, and this is what we were telling you was going to happen. So it's, it's always nice to, to see that happen. Um, and I, the library as well uh, had, has seen remarkable growth in their, in their uh, participation. Absolutely. Um, I think Kyle mentioned it as well. The fact that, you know, for me personally, one of the most nerve wracking feel feelings was opening those doors for the first time and being like, hope you all like it. And, you know, not only getting to them to engage the first time, but to continue to come back. And we're seeing that so much now people that, you know, first time they came, it was just to see what was going on here. And now they've become regular patrons. So we've seen those opportunities for, again, it was bringing new ideas many of our citizens and we're seeing more and more growth all the time of people coming in from other areas but you know they had known the library to be what the library was what the you know this is what a library is um, but we're giving them opportunities now to look outside that box so with our maker space we're now doing 3d printing we're doing laser engraving we're just doing you know all kinds of fun craft programs that we weren't able to do before and we're able now to offer multiple programs at once um, so far in this building, we've offered over two, we've had 250 plus um, private or public meetings held in our meeting rooms. And I think probably one of the most stats I'm most proud of so far is 1700 new library cards have been given out. That doesn't include all the ones that maybe have been expired for a couple of years that they've come in and renewed, but that's just the brand new cards, people walking in and getting new cards. Um, anybody here that's with the libraries know that summer is our time to shine. And I think that was what I was most looking forward to was the first summer here and how that was going to work. Um, so, you know, kudos to our staff. They just went all out and said, okay, we're just going to go for it. So they hosted over 108 programs and ended up having 4,385 people attend those programs in, in this building. And a lot of those programs Without this new space, we would have never been able to offer. We were able to open up the atrium space that's available for rentals. And we were able to, you know, instead of having to limit the crowds that come in, we were able to open it up for three, 400 plus to come to a, to a Silly Safaris program. Um, in those two months, we had a door count of over 27,000 come through our doors in those two months. So I, just like Kyle said, um, I had expectations. And it completely exceeded what I thought was going to happen. And you really think about it, it was still happening at a time that, you know, you really worry about people even getting out. Absolutely. And, and we've seen the impact not only on our uh, entities, but on the community as well. So we talk about just here downtown, what Jasper considers downtown. Um, when this project really got a full head of steam and looked like it was going to happen, 
um, two major investments right across the street. Um, a brand new um, hotel um, was constructed. Um, literally, you, we can, I can look out my window and see the hotel. Um, I think Christine can as well. Um, and then right next to that, another industrial site a factory that hadn't been used for years and was really in various stages of disrepair. Um, that uh, received pr both of these for private investments um, into that space. Uh, the River Center has uh, apartments uh, on the second and third floor, and then it's got um, retail spaces on the lower level. Um, so huge investment right across the street from us. Um, Heart of Jasper formed within the last year to help revitalize our, our local merchants that are downtown. They've implemented a facade grant program. They've done a number of activities in the downtown area and look to really boost the identity of downtown. Um, recently, a new business, I just highlight new businesses that, that have started up. Jumping Jasper moved into another factory that's not too far from us here or former kind of warehouse space. Um, and, and it's what it looks like. They got a bunch of inflatable bounce houses. Kids can come in and have a great time. But that's an, another person, you know, starting their business uh, in that area. And then before I, I couldn't include it in here, it just literally opened, I think within the last week or so, but, um, a, a pole fitness place just opened up as well. Uh, not too far from us. So I, I share these to share that in the downtown area, we talk about that downtown riverfront master plan, it revitalized Jasper's downtown. Um, the city and the library invested, um, you know, time, energy, and resources into a property, into a project. And it just, grew from there and you know we, we showed that we believed in ourselves um and so then they bought in and they said okay well hey if these guys believe in themselves maybe there's something to it they saw our vision they saw what we what we saw and then they invested in it as well um and it extends beyond that even too um christine i'm going to keep going if that's all right yeah. um okay. so if we jump out from downtown we just look at jasper as a whole in the last few years or so we've seen investments from from major chains as well. Now major chains, and it's not everything, but it shows that franchisees are, are seeing our community growing and that we're investing in our community. Um, and so some some major chains that have come through uh, and invested, Duncan, Coles, TJ Maxx, McAllister's, Zaxby, Sonic, Culver's, these are all, the last three aren't even open yet, but they're in various stages of, of getting here. And uh, we've had many local i mentioned jumping jasper and the and, and tiff's pole fitness and we've had other businesses that uh, are started by local people that are getting going so um we showed that the investment in our community um can spur additional investment we just had to kick things off and kick things going and and uh, mayor sites uh, not too long ago shared that um you know if we combine our public sector projects since 2011, there's been about $200 million in completed or announced investments uh, in Jasper, um, and which for a community of 16,000 people now, um, that's it's been a huge transformation. Uh, we had Strassenfest, which is a big street festival for the first time in two years. In those two years, um, all of these things really came to pass. Um, our building opened, Fairfield opened, River Center opened. Um, many of these places either opened or were announced. So Jasper is a totally different place now than it was even two years ago. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do. We're not done yet. We're not going to rest, but um, we're very excited about the future prospects of Jasper. And the comments we've received, I just want to, Christine, I think we should touch base on that real quick before we go to yeah. questions. Just the, the comments we've gotten from folks. You know, Kyle, I think my favorite comment has always been since this opened was, you don't see something like this in a town this size. Um, you know, and that really, you know, I'm not gonna lie, this was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done. At times it felt like it was gonna break you, um, you know, because there were so many hurdles to get through. But at the end of the day, when you get to hear those comments and you get to see what is done for this community and all of the, you know, the people that supported you through this, you know, were there for you every step of the way and made sure this happened. Um, it's so rewarding to hear those comments that people are now making it a point. This is now a destination that they stop at on the way. So I think the biggest thing I would encourage everyone is, yes, it's going to be hard. Anytime you do something that's kind of maybe a little bit out of the ordinary or not something that is done all the time, it's going to be difficult. But in the end of the day, 
look what you get out of it. This is something that we never would have been able to do on our own without the support of all these different groups that we talked about. Um, so I encourage you to take that leap, you know, investigate for your community. Again, invest in that community and see what you can do. I think that's the biggest takeaway, yeah, Christine, is that, um, you know, what, what am I going to take away from this? Great, Jasper has this thing, cool. How does, it, how does it affect me? What do I take away? It's that investing in the arts, uh, whether that's visual, performance, literary, whatever it may be, it, it pays dividends. Um, there are so many examples already um, that show that and we're just the latest or we're just the next example of investing in the arts will pay dividends. Investing in um, your local library will pay dividends. And if the two of them can combine and connect, whether that's through programming or whether that's through physical spaces, all the better. Because we found um, we didn't necessarily have share the exact same patronage. Um, we've garnered new interest. They've garnered new interest. Um, and, and it just looks like it's going to keep growing. And that's our, that's our challenge. That's our, that's our task now is to continue that engagement. Um, but investing in the arts, whether it's literary, visual performance, whatever it may be, will pay off. Um, it may not pay off exactly the way it has for Jasper so far, but it will pay off in some way. Um, I think that's the biggest takeaway that I would say. So I think that's what we had planned on discussing. Um, if there are any questions um, really about any of the process or more about the library or more about Jasper Community Arts, I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, contact information for myself and Christine is uh, up on the screen. So feel free to email either of us. Um, come see us. <laughs> or yeah, right? even better, just come see us. We love giving tours and meeting with folks. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure uh, that we get to do that now. Um, so yeah. Kyle and Christine, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Um, clearly, I mean, this seems like an insurmountable, you know, project that took, you know, close to a decade to, um, to see it come to fruition. Um, and that is, you know, no small feat. Um, I guess um, I have a question. Um, um, do you feel that, um, you know, clearly you have um, collaborated across sectors to get this this project complete. Um, do you feel like for your community through this project that it has had benefits um, to bringing other projects to fruition or other collaborations in the community at all? <laughs> I, I would say so. Um... You know, I, I point to, um, I mentioned the Fairfield and River Center. I think those are two parts. Now, would those projects have happened without the Tim Clark Cultural Center? Maybe, um, but I certainly think that the commitment from the city and from the library to this project um, helped encourage them to move forward with their projects. Uh, in terms of collaboration, um, I certainly think it's opened a lot of doors um, or a lot of lines of communication um, between, I know, Jasper Community Arts and Du Bois County Museum uh, and the Next Act, which owns the Astro. These are you know, entities that were talking before, um, but I really think as far as, hey, let's get serious, let's, let's start getting stuff done. I think it certainly opened those lines of communication. I know from, from JCA's perspective, um, we've taken more calls and, and seen more interest um, than we'd ever had uh, in many, many years. So I think that it has definitely helped open those lines of communication uh, and will set a good foundation for future collaborations. And I think Kyle, you could also probably even mention the fact that now, you know, this is another place, you know, Jasper is a hub of industry. You know, we're very fortunate, even though it's a small town, it's such a, you know, such a, you know, big area when it comes to all the different industries we have here. And one of the comments I always got before was they love to take perspective employees out and show them around the town and show them things. 
now instead of being like, oh, we've got a library or an arts center, you know, this is now one of their main places to say, look what we're doing here. And another reason to get that young talent here. So again, it's another way to really just collaborate even just with that private industry. And then I guess, you know, in, in hindsight, looking over the past years, um, is there anything that you might, I mean, you guys did an excellent job, but is there any, um, you know, advice you can give to other communities um, who are just maybe even starting the idea to do something like this or? I think my number one thing would be, be prepared for things to change, you know, be flexible. That's the biggest thing. Go in with your idea and don't give up on that idea. Um, sure, there's going to be hurdles you're going to have to overcome and there's going to be things that maybe don't go the way you want. Um, but never lose sight of that vision and keep pushing forward because those people who support you will always be in the, you know, there for you, backing you up. So that would probably be my biggest, you know, thing is just keep on your vision and keep going. And there's no reason to dream small, dream big, go for it. This is your chance. And I, I would add a couple of things. One would be um, the sooner you can get a visual representation, even if you throw the caveat, like this may not look like this in the end, but this is an idea um, I think can help a lot of people who may have uh, the levers that you're needing to pull um, or access to those or control over those, but maybe don't share the vision. So the more that you can help those folks along, it's more work. Um, but I really do think in this project that having that visual representation here, having that those renderings really helped turn some people who were against the idea because there were some people who thought we were just going to build a pole barn um, and we showed them that's not the case. It's not what we were going to do. Um, and so having that is a huge help. And the other thing I would say, once you really get into the thick of it um, with the construction meetings or the design meetings, um, there's a lot of homework that's involved, um, a lot of decisions that are made. If you're able to designate someone, whether that's yourself handling primarily the lion's share of that, then you have someone else that can handle more of the day-to-day -day operations. Um, I you staff of 10 people, including myself, it gets to be a lot trying to stay on top of both things. So really having that person who can manage the day-to-day, -day, um, you know, the phone calls, the emails, et cetera, et cetera, um, um, making sure shows happen, exhibits happen, that kind of thing. And then someone who can, Maybe whether it's you or somebody else that can focus on the project itself, um, that would be that would go a long way to help with with your mental health and, and staying um, cool and collected. You're exactly right, Kyle. I don't know how many times that you know not only the staff here at Jasper, the staff at the other branches too. Basically, I mean, they were they were fantastic. They knew what was going on and essentially said, "We got this. You don't worry about us right now. This is your focus here." And I mean, I can't say enough to having them in your in in my corner during this process. Yeah, that's great, great Thank advice, <laughs> great advice. And then um, I guess as we close out here, um, if anyone um, has any questions, throw them in the chat before we, we close up. But what what is next for um, both of your entities uh, separately or together? Well, we're in the, we just started our, um, performance season. Uh, so we're really, we're really starting to put this facility that we have now through its paces. The performances happen at the Arts Center, which we haven't been able to do for a while now. So really getting a feel for, uh, in real world terms, what it's going to be like running two facilities, because now we are running two facilities um, and really getting both up and running, trying to get them up to full speed. Um, and exploring, you know, we have, again, we have ideas, programming that we want to offer, but now it's time where the rubber meets the road and we got to actually put that programming into place. Um, working on a public art master plan um, for the downtown area, um, really now branching out from this hub um, with uh, visual art uh, and programming and, and seeing how we can continue to be more involved with the community now that more of the community knows that we're here. Great points. I would say very much the same, um, but also just the fact that really for, for the libraries, and this is not just our library, this is libraries throughout and probably a lot of other community organization is 
what does your community need from you now? Um, people have changed a lot, you know, lots changed in the last two years. It's not just the building that's changed, but you know, our whole environment has changed. So what does it mean for all of our organizations moving forward and really starting to have those conversations with our communities again about what those needs are moving forward? Yeah, that's great, great point. <laughs> Well, um, well, seeing that we don't have any other questions, um, I wanna thank Christine Golden and Kyle Rupert for sharing their story today. Um, um, I think this is, you know, it's, it's amazing what you guys have accomplished. Um, and um, I can't wait to go down and visit and see what you guys are doing down there. And I hope um, other people in the meeting here can, can make it down to Jasper too. So, so thank you so much and, um, um, please um, join us for some other sessions this afternoon. Um, we do have a couple of creative intermissions uh, directly following uh, this uh, session. So go ahead and take a look at those and um, we'll, we'll see you later today, hopefully. Thanks so much. Thanks, have a great day. Thank you.